Hi everybody, today I'd like to explore the fascination with what we call number pyramids. These numbers that all ring in a bell, they're resonating and repeating and there's this arcane kind of symmetry and fascination with them. But how can we relate this knowledge to what we call multidimensional geometries like this truncated octahedron? So let, let's first examine this um, symmetry here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start off with the number 16 times 4. The reason why 16 times 4 equals 64, because that's what's called 4 cubed. 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. And that number's special because that's the number of codons in our DNA. So just by starting our top of the pyramid, this is like a mesa. The top point of our pyramid is 16 times 4 equals 64. But then I'm going to extend the six here. So we're going to, I'm, I'm going to keep adding another six to this number. So 16 with another six is 166 times four again happens to be 664. If we add another six to 166, we get 1,666 times four equals 6664. And you can see that the pattern keeps extending with sixes and four. So in a way, this lesson is about the fascination with fours and sixes. So I could ask myself, is there a shape in the universe that is constituted just from squares and hexagons? And there, and there actually is. There's this shape here, which is called a truncated octahedron. Um, what that means is that it's an octahedron like this. So this is an octahedron. And we know that an octahedron has six um, vertices. If I sliced off these six corners like that, we call it truncation. When I truncate the octahedron, I end up with um, something that has squares and hexagons. So it has a name. When you touch a vertex or a corner, we, we say there's a square, hexagon, hexagon. So the configuration or signature is called 466. So the, so the reason I've called this pyramid of sixes, I've given it the name of 466. And But we want to look inside these this shape can you see that i've put i've got a string going from these four corners that i'm holding with my fingers so there's actually a, a, a rectangle and the, and the dimensions of that rectangle is one by two so let me just draw that over here we have um this string i'm drawing it over here so inside this truncated octahedron i'm just drawing one of them now but this is at an angle it's actually a double square. And the reason why we love double squares is that if you think of the square as a cube and you put a cube on top of the cube, um, the, the internal diagonal is called root five. And root five is important because root five is part of the most cosmic formula in the universe called the phi ratio. So phi, to get this value of 1.618, it's one plus root five divided by two, that's how we get 1.618. So, and the fact that this is one is to two, if this is one and this is two, it's just a rectangle, we call that in music the octave, when we go from one C to a higher C to the next C. So this has a relationship to musical octaves. So we might be able to translate this information, this data into musical harmonies by understanding that the internal rectangle from those four points, those two points to those two points is one is to two, but it has the memory of the golden ratio in there. And just to understand this one by two, um, we, we studied the works before of Victor Schauberger, and he was saying that all crystals are essentially cubic. And to understand the one by two, we've got that distance there. But what I'm interested in with this cube is that if, if you look at the axis, there's the one axis going vertical, there's another axis going that way, and there's another axis going that way. So there's three one by two rectangles that are interpenetrating at 90 degrees, and that's the symbol of the, the, um, the what we call the Coptic Church in Ethiopia and Greece. It's a symbol of the three-dimensional cross. So this is a sacred symbol. It's not just a normal cross, it's got a third axis. So I find this um, quite interesting that the internal properties of this cube octahedron um, have resonance. And not only that, because I was saying that crystals are cubic, this is actually um, a crystal, not of zeolite. There's a, there's a family or a mineral group of zeolites 
if you're a naturopath, zeolites, you eat these powders of zeolites because they're claw molecules, they pull out heavy metals. So part of this family of zeolites is a crystal called forjasite. Um, I hadn't heard much about it, but when you study um, this shape, you'll see that this subject of artificial intelligence, graphenes and all these oxide are actually a crystalline structure. So, so that's important to know. And the other thing about um, this truncated uh, octahedron is that it's one of 13 uh, Archimedean solids. So we know that a platonic solid like the octahedron, they've got the same face, they're called regular. But when we have mixed faces, like this here where we've got squares and hexagons, or here we've got five and six, we've got the pentagon with the hexagon. This is the atomic structure of carbon-60 called shungite. So when you soak this black shungite crystal in water, you end up with a vibration of this soccer ball shape, which actually is another claw type molecule for healing. So there's actually 13 different shapes like this called Archimedeans. They're called semi-regular. Now, the, now, this particular shape, the truncated octahedron, has this amazing property that when we tie all this in space, imagine I had 10 or 12 of these and I kept tiling them around, gluing them to each other. There's no gaps. And that's a fantastic property of spherical sphere packing because the universe has a law. It's called the law of compression. This is all perfect packing. So, and I've also noticed too that and when I was in Singapore and New York, I traveled around the world. I'd often go to parks and I'd always notice these, what they call these big jungle gyms. So um, uh, a jungle gym is like these big towers that children and adults climb. And if you look closely at all the ropes, it's actually forming these shapes. So just to conclude, I just wanted to tie in um, mathematics numbers with geometry, but I'd just like to conclude that we're going to take these numbers of like 16 times 4 and I want to um, show that we can calculate mentally. It's called speed mathematics. And there was a system by Trachtenberg, a Swiss guy who was in the um, camps of um, Europe. He survived the camps and he came out as a genius in mathematics. And he gave us these amazing things that even the Indian mathematicians hadn't studied. And he gave us a system called multiplication of a single digit. So what I'm going to show you this thing. This is called supermarket mathematics. I've got it written down here. 16 times 4 is we take the 4 and we multiply the 6 and then we multiply the 1. So I'll just do that over here. So 4 times 6 is 20 is um 4 times 6 is 24. And the 4 times the 1 is 4, but we're going to insert a forward slash in between. And the rule is we're only allowed one digit on the right hand side. So that two has to come over to the four. So two plus four is six. So the answer is six slash four. So that's how we got 64. And I'll just do one more. What's six times 44? So you go six times that four is 24. And six, so that's six times four. And six times the other four is also another 24. So in your third eye, in your mental screen, you've got 24. 24 and I slide that 2 over. I slide this 2 to the 24 and I end up with 26 slash 4, 264. So this is called mental one-line arithmetic and I wanted to just show you some examples because as we study sacred geometry and crystals and the whole curriculum, whole curriculum in sacred physics and mathematics, we need to also learn how to become like a, a computer mind, a genius mind, where we're calculating instantly. So you say you're in the supermarket, what six, I've got six um, apples, they're 44 cents. So in your mind, you go 24, 24, slide the two, 26, four, yep, it's $2.64. So what we're doing is we're building up our mathematical confidence. We're strengthening our memory power. So I just wanted to let you know that by by studying this fascination of this pyramid of numbers, we touched on um, Archimedean solids, we touched on the golden ratio octaves, and then we even looked at the Trachtenberg method. So that's the beauty of mathematics, that it expands our consciousness. And um, if you'd like to know more, I have a link in bio to access all the amazing sacred geometry courses that we have available. Thank you, everybody.